we humans are really very interested in our origin. And I would say that human evolution is a mystery. And from my childhood, I loved crime stories. I really adore it. And my profession in somehow resembles to it to find answers on the questions which are buried in ground. And it's in some way very big excitement to find origin of our genus, origin of our ancestors. And we need really very hard work to find the, our common ancestors. Here I put one slide where you can see artistic reconstruction of many of our ancestors, many of them already extinct. And our work is to find connection between them and us. It's not easy, I would say. It's only, <coughs> it's many finds are helping us to do it, but to find real our ancestor, there are efforts of very different professions, including archeologists, anthropologists, geneticians, etc. But still there are many discussions. Many discussions, but one issue is more or less common. We all are coming from Africa. Our ancestors were in Africa and they lived for a long time in Africa. But the question is when they left Africa and start to colonize rest of the world. And prevailing view was about these issues since maybe uh, uh, decades that main story out of Africa could happen either in China or in Java or in Spain, in Italy. And scientists were thinking that it happened around one million years ago. This was a time when our ancestors are becoming more like us. They are already on two legs. They have larger brains than our very old ancestors. <coughs> also, they had bigger body size and they were producing more, more advanced stone tools. All this comparison, it, it's all comparable what happened in very early stages. But now we can speak about place where we learned new, new information and we challenged all these ideas. I'm very happy to say that I'm part of this work and now we are some way participating in solving these big issues about human evolution. And one tiny spot in Georgia helped us to reconstruct very important episode of our evolution, human evolution. And it's in Georgia in Dmanisi. Dmanisi is 80 kilometers from Tbilisi. It was very famous in in medieval time, important trade and political center. And since beginning of last century, archaeologists started to excavate. They were very happy finding this beautiful church, finding beautiful items. But one day, during the excavations, they noticed strange bone. This strange bone is this, it's a copy of, it's copy of tooth which belongs to rhinoceros. Rhinoceros in medieval Georgia fits not so well. Right? <laughs> so since that time, and Professor Weko who identified it, he was very sure that it's rhinoceros which lived at least one million years ago, changed face of the Manisi. And since that time, we have now a large team of scientists working together, and I'm very happy to say that it's a big international interdisciplinary team with many students, and new generation is actively participated in this work. And we are finding, not all <coughs> after these beautiful medieval uh, artifacts, now we are finding 
ugly bones and stone tools. And what we learned, we learned that we have many animal bones, but first of all, we needed to learn time, when it happened. And let me remind you that prevailing view was that humans left Africa only one million years ago. And our finds, and we dated it very precisely, all these volcanic rocks, it goes back to 1.8 million. So we could say, Dmanisi dates 1.8 million years old. And also we have very good preservation of fossils, and particularly animal bones. You can see complete skulls here. And after reconstruction, we could speak about environment, which was not like modern Georgia, because we have not yet giraffes and ostriches. Maybe after global warming, they will come back. But it's a typical African environment, which was 1.8 million years ago. Another crucial issue is the stone producing of stone tools. And at the, I mentioned at the beginning of talk that prevailing view was that humans started to spread out of Africa when they had sophisticated stone tools. What it means? We, we will put it here, this small one, what we found in Manisi. It's a very simple smashed rock. And on the right side, what you can see, it's a hand axis which was predicted to be found in Manisi. And this is quite complicated technology where you have the symmetry of this producing of these stone tools. So let me say that what we found is primitive and comparable to the er very early finds from Africa. So now another point is, of course, to learn who were these people who were producing these stone tools. And in our field, unfortunately, human fossils are very rare. And I could even say that we paleoanthropologists are more num numerous than human fossils. So every find is bring something new. And in 91, during our excavation, and it was last day of our excavations, by chance, we found first human bone. And this is a human jaw. You can see. And it was really very big surprise. Big surprise, and also it's challenged really prevailing views. It's brought the issue that the Manisi could be very early, but also the humans were very primitive. You can't see from here, and it's very well preserved teeth. You can see also the morphology, it's much more ape-like than mine. So, and in 91, together with my professor, late uh, professor Leo Gabunie, we presented it on a big meeting in Frankfurt, and it was exactly 100 years birthday of Peter Cantropos. I am not mentioning many names, Latin names of fossils, because we have so many and we will be really not very happy to listen it. We will spend all my time to give you all this name. But Peter Cantropos is some way real relative of Dumanisi, one of the extinct hominid. So 100 years of Peter Cantropos. I'm coming on this conference, frankly to say it was shock for me, because I saw all big names, which I knew before from the books, together. And I saw their reaction. Here is this <laughs> famous picture, and yeah, it's myself. But it was different haircut in that time, you know. <laughs> so it's, uh, and my, here is Professor Clark Howell, Professor Wolpoff, you can see his jaw dropping when he saw this, our mandible. And there were two groups. One group of scientists accepted our idea, but mostly people were skeptical. Skeptical, it, it's understandable, you know, it's 91, we're just coming on the stage. Georgia is not well known, and it's good coincidence that it's a, we are coming on the stage of paleoanthropology when Georgia was gaining our independence. So in some way, in 91, we were like from nowhere. Nobody can accept it. But this was one reason. 
But second also is that anatomy of Joe is very complicated. In, uh, there exists one proverb that Joe is creation of the devil and skull is creation of the god, meaning that skull is more informative. And it was necessary to find skulls. And you can see the ground, and then you can see the cast of the skull, which we found later. And now we could very clearly say that what we found in the Manisi, it's very primitive, very small brain. It's much smaller than mine, you can see. It. Even in mine, it's not biggest brain, right? But it, here we have around 600 cc cubic centimeter. It has no forehead, and it had many primitive features which makes it connected to very early African finds. Now we are very rich, and we have beautiful collection of the skulls, and I would say this is best collection in the world from one specific site from this time period, and it gives us a unique chance to look on big picture of the evolution and populations. Also, it's not just skull. These people had a body too, right? So we found also rest of skeleton we are finding. Before to see it, you can see here difference. The Manisi in, in, uh, in the middle, chimpanzee and modern human. How the Manisi looks more ape-like in this case than human-like. And then we have now also body size. And let me remind you that prevailing view was that humans should have larger brain, <coughs> they should be big, and what we found, it's less than one meter, 50 centimeter, and also they are producing very primitive stone tools. So we could definitely say that answers on this question, who, when, and why left Africa, has been challenged. We brought new information, say, information saying that it happened much earlier. They were much more primitive, and it was no necessity to have sophisticated stone tools to spread out of Africa. So this is, <coughs> which is accepted for, by the scientific world, and now is no more doubts. We are on the stage, and we got a lo lot of recognition. But story is continuing, and I'm happy also to say that we don't want to leave these questions only just anatomy, just measuring bones, you know. What we really want to learn also is who were these people and what they were doing. And coming back to my interest in childhood to reconstruct crime story, it helps to put puzzles together. And for example, we had this find we found it a few years ago. This is skull, it's complete cranium, skull and jaw. It has no teeth, it's completely toothless, and it's sick, definitely sick. So it, at least two years, this individual lived. Lived without teeth and very sick. So how we could explain? And maybe, maybe we can see human behavior something which is human emotion, and we can see traces of compassion. So uh, let's say that the Manisi helps us to bring new issues, and also story is not over. We are continuing to work, and every year we are finding more and more, and we excavated only 7% of the site. This is the new finds from this year, complete humerus arm bone. And also, the Manisi belongs not to us, only to us. We have huge responsibility to protect it, and you can see how it was and how it is today, and it's very important, protect heritage and respect nature. And we try to do it, and also to make the Manisi accessible for public. Science belongs not to, just to scientists, it's what, what we try to do to bring people to the site, show it, and what we try really do that the Manisi is open for science. The Manisi is open for formation, and many students all over the world are coming to the Manisi. And what is 
most important, I would say, to look in future. To look in future and to bring new generation in our field, generally in science. And I'm sure among these uh, kids, there are some new heroes who could give us many new evidence about human evolution. Thank you very much. Thank you.